family and call our toll-free number 1-800-245-9779. Get your cookbook today. And now off to Peter and Katie. I would like to welcome Peter Bradshaw to our studio kitchen. Peter, thanks Thank you. for joining Thank us you. again. We have uh, a nice great looking. Well, good because uh, I think we're going to really feel like it's nice that you were here once we uh, see what you've made here. Um, this is really going to be especially interesting because um, Peter, right before we went on in the air, checked his recipe and said, "I have to see what I wrote because I don't use recipes." So tell us a little bit about where this recipe came from. I don't. I was inspired by something I saw on. It may have been on a cooking show on TV. Might have seen it in a restaurant. I don't know. I just got, maybe I just got a wild hair. Okay, I just well. just got the idea and said, let's, let's try and make something out of it. And you and took so it and I, went with it. That, that, that's how I do it. And this is how recipes are born. So we are watching the birth of a recipe here. And what we've got is, now I've, I've plated one up. This is the, the finished product. I don't know if we can. Yeah, we can see that. Uh -huh. And uh, this is this is a, a whole meal. We're not going to make the whole meal. We'll, okay. We'll, we'll skip the rice here because the, the recipe is in the book. Okay. And it's it's easy. It's really easy. What we've got is we've got some fish that was baked on sautéed beet greens with steamed grated beets mm -hmm. and saffron rice. Oh. And this is great. a lovely, intimate dinner for two. Oh, and it's beautiful. It's beautiful. The colors, it, everything just comes together so nicely. So how do we do it? Well, what do you want to start with first? What we want to start with is beets. Lovely beets. I now, got, I find beets so intimidating. It, fresh beets. I always go with the canned ones or the jarred does. ones. And I, know, I, know, I thought I didn't like beets until I started eating fresh beets ah, because they're so okay. much better. Okay. And what you want to do, now I got these, uh, I, I get them at Wegmans. Mm -hmm. uh, these happen to come from the farmer's market. Okay. So beautiful fresh beets. And just nice beets like this. You want to make sure that you get good sized beets and also the greens. The greens are important because we're going to use the beets, the roots, and the greens. Oh, not a lot okay. of waste here. So what we do is we wash them thoroughly. Okay. Just, just, and some people even scrub them up a little bit, but I just wash them thoroughly. Okay. Then we can just take the greens and okay. reserve those out. And remember, looks like something uh, Popeye would eat. Those have, full of those. yes, these have been washed. Okay. And washed again. <laughs> take the I, beet, I, uh, your beets and vegetable uh -huh. peeler, and just peel oh, the beets, okay. just right down. Just like you'd peel you a do, potato. Just like you'd peel a potato. Uh huh. Okay? And is the, the skin comes off pretty easily. It, oh, it, it's as easy as doing a potato. Okay. Huh? Then we can just take the, uh, I actually like to leave a little bit of a handle on there. Okay. Because once it's all peeled and grated, then what we're going to do is we're going to grate them. Okay? A little hand grater and just grate them right into the pot. Okay. Just like that. So, so you don't have anything in this pot? You don't have I've any got nothing oil or in anything? There. No just, oil, just the no beets. water, just okay. the beets. So. Could you hand me the, uh, I've got some beets that I've already peeled. Oh, okay. There you go. Okay. And we'll just grate them in. And for two, you're going to want probably about three or four beets that size. Okay. Okay. Two per person about that size. Okay. So that's all there is to that. Let's let's set this aside so it's okay. no longer just in our way. Okay. Put it in here. And I get to tell you about our little tip. I'm going to use your... Uh, I'm going to use the... Go thing. right ahead. <laughs> to get beet juice off your sand, if your hands are beet stained, uh -huh. a little salt, a little lemon juice, rub them together, run it under water, stains come right out. And how about when you get the stains on your apron then? How do you get on them out? Ap <laughs> aprons are tough. A aprons little tougher, are tough. huh? You have to use, on the counter, just a little bit of bleach in a spray bottle, dilutes some bleach. Gets uh, it one right out. Bleach and just spray it, gets it right out. Okay. So. Good little tip. So we've got about four grated beets in here. Mm-hmm. What we're going to do is we're going to add just a little, little pepper, and somewhere here I have some nutmeg. nutmeg My nutmeg grater nutmeg. is over there. Uh, would that be I nutmeg? don't know if I put this in in the recipe, but why not? Just a little <laughs> fresh grated nutmeg. You can't go too wrong. Goes a little right bit of in there. Okay. About a teaspoon of water, and just a little dash of balsamic vinegar okay. or red wine vinegar. Okay. Works great too little salt and I have a salt cellar here. Now, uh, okay. If you do something a little bit different every time, does it taste a little bit different every uh, time you prepare it? Yes, every time yeah? it comes out a little. And then what it's happens if you... almost always good. <laughs> almost. <laughs> almost always good. Well, when you, when you hit on one that's just absolutely wonderful, do you ever write it down then and say I have to remember exactly how I did this? 
No. No. Okay. No. Nope. <laughs> you just surprise yourself and, again next and time. And I can't. I have no idea how many wonderful creations I've forgotten. Oh. <laughs> Finally, a little dollop of butter, and that okay. just goes on to steam. Okay. Put that on the burner. With no water, it'll steam with that, just the butter and just the, the butter, vinegar. the vinegar, and um, yeah. Okay. About two tablespoons. You can add if, if if it seems like it's going to be. Take a look at it after a couple of minutes, mm -hmm. and if there's not enough water in there, you think for it to steam, uh -huh. just add a little splash of water. Okay. A couple of tablespoons. Okay. Okay. Ooh, so it's the beets are good going. Already. Okay. okay. So the beets are going. All right. Meanwhile, we've got a pan that's hot. Okay. And we're done with these, so okay. we can just throw here. Put those right there. Away they go. You know, I used to watch the cooking shows, and I always wondered what kind of trash cans they had. <laughs> what was behind that counter? Okay. Now we've got the beet greens, and that's what we're going to do next. Okay. So in our hot pan, smoking hot. That's a little too hot. Just move that off for now. Okay. Oof. Smoking hot pan. And the fire alarms are about to go off. But that's okay. That's okay. That would just add to the excitement. That, is, that pan got hot. What we're going to do is take a little onion. We're just going to dice some onion. Okay. Yeah. Now it looks like a medallion. Is it, do you, this is do you a white onion. The, uh, oh, a white just onion. A white, okay. onion. Okay. white onion, yellow onion. Uh, a medallion, I think, would be wonderful mm -hmm. in this. And then we're just going to dice the onion. Well, and you do that like someone who has diced many an onion <laughs> with such authority. Into the pan. Okay, that's it, better. If that smoke's smelling like onion, it's hot. You can deal with it, yeah. Okay. Garlic. Mm -hmm. Gotta have garlic. And just take a clove, bash on it like that, mash on it like that, and then a quick dice. In Ooh. that goes. And then this can just. Okay, for a minute or two. Mm -hmm. Just till those mm. are soft. It smells great. In the meantime, we take our beet greens, roughly chop them. If you, you want, you can just tear them. It's easy. Okay. Well, you do do that like a professional. And this is just for fun that you cook, right? It, yep, just for fun. In go the beet greens. Mm -hmm. And that's still on about medium heat. Okay. Why not some uh, nutmeg? Why not? Why not? <laughs> Little nutmeg. Little dry white wine. I use for most because I'm not tempted to drink it, <laughs> but it's great for cooking. So anytime you see dry white wine in a recipe, can you always substitute for for dry white wine? Yep. Yeah. Uh, and does it work the other way if the recipe calls for vermouth? Oh you can yeah. Use white wine? Sure. Okay. Sure. Vermouth. French vermouth. Okay. French vermouth. It's got to be the dry. Okay. I prefer the French vermouth. And it's, but it's got to be the dry vermouth. Okay. So these are, as you can see, wilting down nicely. Uh -huh. okay. Oh, and smelling wonderful already. Okay. Did I put pepper in there? No, you did not. Let's put some pepper in. Okay. You grinds it. You know, you're driving the audience at home crazy with, let's put some of this, let's put some of that. <laughs> it's all in the recipe. Okay. It's, it, this may not be the exact recipe, uh, that I'm doing now that's written down, but the one that's written down does work, it is good, it's perfect. Now, do you entertain a lot? I'm, I'm guessing that we, you do. Yeah, yes. Yeah. I, okay. we, 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 I like to cook, have people over, and uh, show off my skills. Yeah, right. Yeah. Formidable skills they are. This is this cooking down nicely. That's All the beet greens are nicely wilted. Okay. We'll throw the rest of those in there. Okay. I've got now the fish. Next comes the fish. This happens to be some uh, black fin shark. Okay. I think this works great with any firm white fish. Um, absolutely fabulous with sea bass, oh, but of yes. course sea bass is a lot of money, yep. very expensive. Um, you could do this with tilapia, you could do this with haddock, you could do this with cod, uh, sole, and any firm white fish is going to work great. And all we do is do a little Two grinds of pepper. Okay. And my salt cellar is over here. Okay. Pardon my reach. A little dash of salt. I like to use kosher salt. So it looks like I'm putting a lot of salt on there, but it's really not that much. Okay. That's a, a large piece of fish. Then I'll just use this. We just dot it with some butter. Mm -hmm. 
top, dot the top with some butter. Okay. We've got our wilted beet greens. Mm -hmm. And mound that up. Just lay the fish right on top. You're going to cook it right in the pan? Yep. Okay. This is now ready to go. All we do, pop over here. Oops. So you cook it right in the pan? In it, right in the pan. Okay, and you're cooking so, so it this for is, This what? is so easy. Now that's a, uh, a 350 oven, mm -hmm. and it's going to go for about 10 to 12 minutes. But just take a peek at it. All you do is take a peek at it after about 8 or 10 minutes. And look He's at taking it. my fork. <laughs> Poke at it a little bit. I'm taking another and if one. It, if it's gotten to where it's just flaky, you don't want to overcook it, of course. Okay. Overcooked fish is... Yeah, okay, right. <laughs> okay. And just, just poke at it, and when it's gotten a little flaky, then it's done. And when it's done, of course, you can see that it just starts to flake like that. Okay, yeah. Well, that so looks it starts nice. to, to pull apart. Well, do you mind if I sample it here? Absolutely, please. Okay, I'm going to take some of this, and I'm going to get some of the beet greens in here. Mm. Peter, it's spectacular. It's low fat. Mm. It's high protein. But you know, it doesn't taste healthy. It tastes too good to be healthy. <laughs> it's it really does. Oh, it's wonderful. And we've got it here with the saffron rice, mm -hmm. which I think makes it a, a real nice, nice combination. Well, Peter, thank you so much for sharing this with us. And if you would like to have this recipe for baked fish with sauteed beet greens, here's how you can get it. Peter is a fabulous